All right, third graders, Berkeley and I have come to the little lake down by our house to do our next science lab. And you're gonna need a few materials, okay? The first thing you're gonna need is a magnet, okay? The stronger the magnet, the better. A couple other materials you're gonna need is some sand, okay? That's why we came down to the, the beach by the lake here so we can get some sand. Uh, you could just get some in a bucket, would be fine, okay? You're also going to need a variety of items that are both magnetic and non-magnetic. The last thing you are going to need is your science notebook. And we are going to be recording here. So you're gonna need a chart that has one side that says magnetic, labeled magnetic, the other one labeled non-magnetic. Okay, now one thing you'll notice is that all of the items that Berkeley and I picked had different properties. Some of them were metal, some of them were plastic, some of them were even glass, okay? Now, what we've done with these is bury our little treasures into our sand pile, and Berkeley is going to take this magnet and she's gonna dig around in the sand pile and see what sticks to it. And that's gonna tell her which of all of those items has just the one property of being magnetic. Warning, the rest of this video shows the results of the experiment. If you have not yet done the experiment yourself, we suggest you pause here and do that first, then come back and watch. All right, Berkeley, go ahead and dig around in there. See what we can find. Oh, what's that? Oh, her necklace. That looks like it is magnetic. Ooh, what else did we find? Ooh. Oh, what is that? A screw? Why don't you stick the magnet on the screw and see if it's magnetic? All right, set them down and see which one's magnetic. Oh. Looks like the screw is magnetic. So yep, we're gonna separate into piles of magnet, uh, items that are magnetic and items that are not. So it looks like the Lego is not sticking. So maybe put that in the non-magnetic pile. Ooh, the penny was not magnetic, huh? It's bronze. Bronze is not the type of metal. <laughs> Actually, today's pennies are made from copper and zinc. Well, it's a type of metal. But not the right But type not of... a magnetic type of metal, right? This one's not magnetic, not what? even the wing. What is that thing called again? A hatchimal? Yep. All right. Hatchimals hatch from an egg. Oh, wrong pile. That's the magnetic oh, pile. Yep, over here in the non-magnetic pile. Oh, look at the pine stuck. All right, yep, put it in the magnetic pile. As you can see, we have now separated all of our materials into magnetic and non-magnetic categories. Now, I need to record my findings. So Berkeley, what are some of the things we learned from our experiment? The coins were metal, but they weren't magnetic. Even though the coins were metal, they weren't magnetic, right? Yeah. That's weird, I wonder why that is. The metals that are naturally magnetic in our world include iron, nickel, cobalt, and steel, but only because steel contains iron. Yeah, great, so what else? So none of the plastic items were magnetic and none of the glass items were magnetic. Is that right? Yes. 
But not all of the metal items were magnetic. Only some of them were. Right? So what can we conclude from this experiment? Was your hypothesis correct? It's absolutely okay if it wasn't. In fact, that's when scientists learn the most and most scientists get their hypothesis wrong a lot of the time. It's part of the process, so it's okay. Now comes the last step in the scientific process, where we get to share with all of our friends and our teacher everything we learned about the magnetic properties that some items have. Okay, now while we were digging through the sand, we made an amazing discovery. If you look, I can take some of this stuff off of this rock. Look, or off of my magnet, I'm sorry. And look at what falls off of the magnet, okay? Just pieces of the sand, okay? Now, watch what happens when I take my magnet it picks it all back up again. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That is a certain type of rock that came out of the sand. What I want you to do is challenge yourself, do some research. And find out what kind of rock that is that's coming out of the sand at the beach down by our lake.